Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. New efforts to track down a sexual predator. Pasadena police releasing chilling new video showing the suspect stalking his victim before kidnapping her at knife point. Hey, good morning. I'm Megan Tellis in Santa Monica. Behind me, you see Metro buses. Well, a bus driver was attacked overnight. This is following two other attacks on a Metro bus over the weekend. Coming up, what Metro has to say and what safety measures they want put in place immediately. Good morning, everyone. I'm Carlos Herrera, and Orange County City is banning short-term residential rentals like Airbnb and Verbal, while officials say this move will make housing more affordable for folks in the area. That's next. Good morning, I'm Jessica Holmes, Dodger star Shohei Otani preparing to say aloha. Details on the impressive piece of land he just secured in Hawaii. Good morning, I'm Sam Rubin. Brian Cox played a tough guy in succession. Tough in real life, too, what he's talking about now, including his criticism of another actor's performance. Uh, plus, a really popular TV doctor announces a major change in their career. It's not Dr. John, y'all, don't worry. We'll share it with you coming up. bit of fog starting out in the morning hours at the beaches. Uh, we ran into that yesterday. We started out with clear skies, but then the fog started to move in as the land warms up a little bit faster than the ocean, and that's the reason why the fog comes in. But this morning, we started out with fog even in the early hours. Coastal high today, 67, downtown 70, 80 for the San Fernando Valley, 75 Orange County Inland, Inland Empire 80, and the high desert up to 83 degrees. Ginger has all the latest on what's happening in traffic. I do, and you know, a lot of times the southbound side of the five, when you head through areas of, say, Commerce and East LA, Montebello, it is busy. Somehow, a car ended up losing control. Perhaps they found that spot where they could speed and now it is on for the drive to be a busy one anyway by freeway heading south right here at about Garfield so the car lost control it overturned it's sitting in lanes I mean look you're backed up for about six to about six miles per hour with delays at six miles per hour look at the delays that extend onto the 710 and I feel like this is slow enough that it'll mess things up for your drive on the 10 the 60 and that 101 split that's a busy one I mean if you can you know like the 5 to the 10 Maybe even exiting at Rosemead Boulevard or the 605 to get yourself around some of those heavy delays. Going north, probably Telegraph Road is your way around it, right? Crenshaw has been the busy drive, whether it's on the 10, the 405, or right here, 105 West at Crenshaw Boulevard. You know, it's a motorcycle crash. We mentioned we'll see more bikes on the road with more and more um, nice weather that we're getting, the better conditions. And so that means people hit the roads. They sometimes, hopefully... We'll take public transportation as well, but we do see more motorcycles on the roadway, and that's the reason the drive continues to be slow, perhaps with this wreck that's now sitting in lanes. You move farther to the west, and that's where the drive continues to be a little bit of a rough one. We'll watch it. Frank, back to you. Ginger, thank you. We continue to follow breaking news here. Third attack on board a Metro bus within a week. This time, another driver was injured. Suspect is in custody. KTLA's Megan Tellis live in Santa Monica with the details for us. Megan, good morning. Yeah, good morning. We've switched locations up since earlier in the show, so you can see exactly where this incident took place overnight. And last night's incident took place after two incidents happened on last Saturday. So we'll get to those in just a second. We can take a look behind me. This is right here in Santa Monica off of 5th in Colorado. If you're familiar with this area, this is one of the metro bus stops here. And according to L.A. County Sheriff's Department, sheriff's deputies who responded to the incident last night say a suspect, possibly homeless, approached a bus, wanted to get on that bus, but the door was closed. The suspect then kicked the glass door until it shattered. That is when the driver exited the bus. He got out of there, but the suspect attacked him, injuring that bus driver's left side of his face. The driver was treated and released at a local hospital. The suspect was arrested and taken into custody. Now to those two other incidents that happened last Saturday. The sheriff's department now searching for the attempted murder suspect. Here is a picture of him right there on your screen. This was captured via surveillance, at least some freeze frames here. Investigators say Saturday night around 8 30 this man attacked a metro bus operator for no reason this happened down in south la at 119th street and wilmington avenue authorities say the man yelled at the driver punched him in the face and then repeatedly stabbed him a good samaritan stopped to help then she spoke to us about what she witnessed listen he had 
so much blood um, in his chest. I So I knew that he was hurt in his chest. Oh. Um, you know, he was like walking back and forth, asking, screaming for help. You know, I screamed to him, get inside my car, get inside my car. And I just said, calm down. It's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And that was Erica Diaz, who was driving behind the bus when it pulled over at a stop. She noticed a young man in his 30s shouting for help just outside of her car. That's when Diaz rushed to help that man and took him to a nearby hospital. A Metro spokesman says that the stabbing victim is now resting at home. Now, hours before that attack, another happened. This was Saturday morning along Sunset Boulevard in Silver Lake. In this video, paramedics carefully are lifting a blood-soaked passenger off of a Metro bus. Reports say the man was taken into the hospital in critical condition after suffering multiple stab wounds. It's unclear at this time what exactly happened, but police were able to quickly track down a suspect in that area who was then handcuffed and taken away. You're probably wondering, what does Metro have to say about these three incidents that have happened in the past couple of days? Well, they did release a statement about the Silver Lake stabbing, saying in part, Metro is saddened to hear about this senseless act of violence against our bus operator, which was apparently fueled by drug abuse and untreated mental illness crises that are plaguing our nation. We are also hearing from the bus drivers union. They say there absolutely needs to be better security measures being put in place. They want these uh, measures to be universal and federally mandated. They are calling for not only bulletproof enclosures to be put in on each bus around these bus drivers, but they also want silent alarms and armed security on every bus. That is the very latest in Santa Monica. I'm Megan Tellis. Back to you guys in Hollywood. Megan, thank you. Developing news now from Anaheim. Police are investigating a shooting that left one person hospitalized. It happened just after 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon on West Ball Road near Dale Avenue. When officers arrived, they found a victim suffering from at least one gunshot wound. That person was transported to a local hospital in unknown condition. No arrests have been made. There is no information on the shooter or a motive. Police have released a new surveillance video of a sexual predator stalking a victim in Pasadena. The man is wanted in the kidnapping and sexual assault of a woman sitting in her car outside of a restaurant near Sierra Villa Avenue and Foothill Boulevard. The suspect, who was armed with a knife, got in through an unlocked back door and forced that woman to drive to another area where she was assaulted. She eventually managed to get away and called 911. The man is described as six feet tall in his 30s, heavy set. He was last seen wearing a black face mask and gray hooded rain jacket. The victim told police he has a distinctive raspy voice. Anyone with information is urged to call the Pasadena Police Department. Santa Ana City Council has voted to ban short-term rentals within city limits. Council members say the move is meant to preserve the character of neighborhoods and open up much-needed housing supply. KTLA's Carlos Herrera live in Santa Ana now with details for us. Carlos, good morning. Hi, Jessica. Good morning. And the council yesterday approved, unanimously voted uh, for this urgency ordinance. That means that this ban goes into effect immediately. They say that the city desperately needed a move like this to reduce housing prices in the area, but the decision is sparking debate among local renters and homeowners. I mean, I'm all for making profit, but I think in this economy, we're having a housing crisis. Rent is really at its all-time high right now, so I think that that conversation needs to be addressed. Others think the ban is just too rigorous. The city says the move is to preserve the character of neighborhoods and open up much-needed house supplies. Officials and many residents blame a recent spike in short-term rentals from sites like Airbnb and Verbo for issues such as litter, excessive noise, parking, and many more. They say right now there are more than 1,100 active short-term rental units across Santa Ana, which actually makes up 35% of the city's new housing needs residents yesterday sounding off during hours of public comment. It's very important that we stand up for housing. We're in a housing crisis and as you heard one of the issues is supply and demand. Short-term rentals take housing off of the long-term market and reduce the supply of long-term housing. I strongly believe that we provide a valuable service to the community by offering lodging options for families that visit Southern California thereby boosting tourism and revenue for the city and the surrounding areas. 
Under the ordinance, it is prohibited to offer, rent, or maintain any short-term rental for less than 30 days. Violators could face penalties, including a fine of up to $5,000, up to six months in jail, or both. It is still unclear how the city will enforce it. Santa Ana's ban comes after the city of Irvine banned short-term rentals in residential zones in 2018. A study in real estate economics revealed that long-term rents in the city dropped by 3% a decrease of $114 a month on average. This morning, we have reached out to Verbo and Airbnb for comment. We've yet to hear back. The city wants you to know that if you suspect that there is any short-term residential rental in your area, you should report it to the authorities. We'll send it back to you. Carlos, thank you. Dodger superstar Shohei Otani snagging a prime piece of real estate for the offseason. Japanese slugger has purchased a 1.1 acre lot on the big island of Hawaii. Hawaii News Now reports Otani paid $17 million <laughs> for a lot. A lot. In an upscale development, wow. I'd say, within the Mauna Kea uh, Resort. Uh, construction has not yet started, but it's expected <laughs> to be one of only 14 luxury mm. mansions with mm. an ocean view. His future home will also overlook the eighth hole of a golf course. The report says Otani's property will include a private hitting and pitching facility mm -hmm. for preseason training. The resort itself sits on 34 acres featuring two golf uh, uh, courses, private beaches, and hotels. Uh, it's unclear when his home will be completed. How gorgeous. Oh, wow. Goodness. <laughs> it's good to be showing. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. Absolutely, wow. nice. absolutely. All right, uh, and uh, here we go. Uh, Shohei would probably enjoy this kind of weather here in California, too. It's going to be a beautiful day. Yes, we should have Shohei uh, weigh in on my shoes. By the way, uh, Omar Lewis joining us live at 820. Oh, for okay, his, good. His analysis. sartorial yeah. analysis of my shoes. He's okay. going to break it down for yes. us. But I, I feel you're going to be okay. Okay. Uh, not to worry. Thank you. Uh, 12 minutes after 8 o'clock, and uh, the temperature, well, it's going to be on the uh, mild side, but just a little bit cooler today in most areas compared to what we had yesterday and the day before. We kind of peaked. Uh, a little bit cooler, a little stronger marine layer giving us those cooler numbers, and you can see the fog and the haze still hanging in at the beaches after that. Heading into the weekend, we warm up just a touch for Saturday and a whole lot warmer by the time we get into Sunday. 56 right now. It's about the same as it was yesterday at this time in the downtown area. Winds are from the northeast at 5 miles per hour. Almanac yesterday, 77. average.